Hey everyone, FPS Chaslin here. So this is the first video of my experiment series here. In this one we're checking out the effective ranges of active sonar. Now if you know me, I have a very scientific way of going about things. So this video starts out with, uh, this is assuming the most optimal, ideal active sonar conditions. So these numbers may seem a bit large. Uh, because of that and also for other reasons, but we'll get into that for in a second here. So Conditions of the map. We're in the middle of the Atlantic. It's January Sea state of one, which is the calmest you can get in the game uh, The sound speed profile is bottom limited, which means there's no layer and the bottom type is rock which uh, provides the furthest uh, Sound propagation or the best sound propagation is rock bottom um, so let's start out here with the first tests I did. So my friend Tamborello and I started out a while ago. This has been a long time in the making. So he was in an Oscar II. I was in a 688i, and this was in RA. And I was trying to see what the maximum detection range is from a 688i active sonar against an Oscar II. So as it turns out here, in RA... Uh, the maximum range for an Oscar II for detecting with an active sonar from an LA is 20 nautical miles. Yes, 20 nautical miles. And that is with a beam perspective. So beam means you're looking at the exact side of the ship. Um, if you change that to a bow profile, so you're looking down the long axis of the ship, you're looking at it from the front, that range decreases to 15 nautical miles, which is still a very long way away. When I first saw these numbers, I was like, these can't be right. These numbers are huge. Uh, what I also did, in addition to examining multiple target platforms from the 688i, I also looked to see what the differences were between mods. So as you can see here, Luami has a greatly reduced range, going from 15 to 1 on the bow and 20 to 8 on the beam, which is, uh, you know, seems pretty crazy. It's a pretty big reduction, and it seems somewhat almost, I don't know, seems way too short to only be able to see an Oscar II from one nautical mile away. But that is beyond the scope of this video. So moving on to the Akula 3 here, uh, you would expect there to be a slightly reduced range to the target here because, you know, it is a smaller boat than the Oscar II. Uh, so moving on to the data tables here, if we take a look, you can see that it is, in fact, a shorter distance here. Um, is shorter by a, a, a noticeable amount, but not a huge amount. So for, like with the Oscar II, between RA and stock, the ranges are the same. Uh, 12 to the bow and 17 to the beam. But then moving on down to Luami here, we have even more reduced ranges. So this less than one here means that it's barely perceptible at one nautical mile. Mostly just because I probably knew where it was going to show up on the active sonar anyway. And then the beam in Luami was reduced to 7 nautical miles, which should probably be less because the Akula 3 is a lot smaller from the beam perspective than an Oscar 2. So let's move on now to what should be an interesting result, and that is the 688i against the Kilo. So the Kilo is much smaller than both the Oscar 2 and the Akula, so it should have a pretty significant reduction in range here. Um... So moving on to the data tables here, it looks like, yeah, it does have a, well, it depends. It has a pretty decent reduction in range in RA going from 12 to 10 on the bow and 17 to 14 on the beam from the Akula respectively. But in stock, the ranges are exactly the same as the Akula, which is very interesting. I'm not sure why they did it that way because the Kilo is demonstrably a smaller sub than an Akula. But in Luami, the ranges get down, downright silly. The Kilo was not even detectable at a bow range of of uh, one nautical mile. This less than, less than means that I didn't see it. But uh, another difference I'm going to harp on real quick is that between stock and Luami and RA. In RA, when you no longer can see a contact, you get um, you don't get any more audio, audio clues. In stock and Luami, once a contact drops off your sonar, once you can no longer see it on the active, you can still hear it, but you don't get that in RA. So in Luami, I was always able to hear a return from the, the kilo, but never could see it. And then the beam range drops down to one nautical mile too. So even more so, I think these are, these are 
it seems more and more as I'm looking at this that they seem almost kind of silly. Like Luami almost did it on purpose to try and nerf the active sonar here. And now that we're done with, uh, you know, what I did with the 688i, let's move to the parry now. So I also did the same targets with the parry. And uh, the parry is an interesting platform in the respect, in the fact that it has uh, three modes of active sonar, whereas the subs only have one. So if we go to the whole sonar screen here and we change our mode to active, which it already is, we have three modes here. Single beam, omni, and omni rotational. Uh, forget about omni rotational for now. We're just going to talk about single beam and omni. So single beam here is uh, press transmit here and you get a beam of energy going down a narrow a narrow path here, which is a plus or minus 20 degrees. So a 40 degree window is all that your sonar energy goes down. Now if we go back and change this to Omni, you get sonar that goes across every single possible bearing. So the single beam uh, is equivalent in power to the Omni, but it takes all this energy and focuses it down to that plus or minus 20 degree beam there. So that's the that's the difference between uh, single beam and omni. So the single beam gives you more power, and it also only goes down this narrow path. So if we go back to a single beam here, if there's a sub out here, he's not going to hear this ping. Uh, so that's that's a good advantage to single beam, and it also increases your power too. So more likely to see something down this path. So now what omni rotational is is single beam but it goes across every single bearing. So what it does is it, in quick succession, fires off, um, it fires off a beam, you know, down this way, and then adjusts it plus 20, fires off another beam, plus 20, fires off another beam, plus 20, fires off another beam. And then, uh, so you get the same effect as a single beam, but across your whole, whole range of bearings here. So let us now move on to the Perry Omni results. First off, as you can see, these ranges are very small. The Omni is very weak because it's, uh, for whatever reason, it's just very weak. That There's not as much power behind it as with an LA ping or a sub ping in general. And another reason for that is probably being so close to the surface. We did do C-State 1, but uh, a certain level of a uh, washout or ambient noise is expected. So as you can see here for uh, RA, the ranges are actually reduced a, 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 a somewhat decent amount at least half, approximately half from stock, the ranges are reduced for uh, all platforms. Uh, and uh, El Kilo and Akula 3, that they weren't even detectable. Um, going down to Luami, reduced even further, but uh, the beam for RA and Luami is pretty much identical. For the Kilo and Akula 3, the numbers are just about identical. But the Oscar 2 beam range is a lot shorter for Luami. So now let's move on to the single beam omni rotational results. Starting off with stock. Once again, stock has the highest ranges. Uh, 9.82 for the Oscar 2 beam is so precise because that is the Perry active sonar is limited to 20,000 yards, which converts to 9.82 nautical miles. So the Oscar 2 could potentially be detected further past that, but it doesn't matter because the Perry won't be able to see it. Um, Kilo and Akula once again have the same same ranges in stock and uh, Kilo and Akula 3 both have a nearly identical bow range as the Oscar 2 which is also kind of silly. Moving up to RA, these numbers seem to make more sense compared to the stock numbers. Oscar 2 results pretty much unchanged but Akula 2 is uh, lesser still and Kilo is lesser even more. The bow perspective is very small. Maybe it shouldn't be that small but who knows. Um, that's for another video. And finally, going to Luami, uh, the Luami numbers for the Oscar II actually are in good agreement with RA and stock, which is interesting compared to previous results. Uh, the Kilo three ranges, just the bow is reduced, and the uh, Kilo ranges are identical as RA. So let us now move on to back to submarines. Let's go to the Akula three here. As you can see, these ranges are, if you remember from the six eight eight I, pretty similar as to uh, you know, some common adversaries you're going to see as in the Kula 3. Um, some of the ranges are almost dead on, except uh, the stock detection ranges are a, a, a decent bit shorter than for the 688i. If we go ahead and bring up that comparison right now. 
you can see that flipping back and forth are just about equivalent here. Um, so if you're in a Colo 3 going against 688i or vice versa, you're not really going to see too much of a distinct advantage one way or the other. The 688i does have a slight edge in detection range, uh, but very slight, very slight. Uh, going down to Luami, though, for your Kula 3, the detection ranges are very, very low. Um, can't even see in Ohio past 2 nautical miles, which is very surprising. Very low detection range indeed. Especially since this is, like, super ideal conditions. If it's, like, a very, like, a rough sea state and a shallow area with a mud bottom, like, forget it. You're not seeing anyone on active. And finally, let's wrap this up by checking out the Kilo here. So... As you can see with RA, the Kilo ranges are pretty similar to um, a Kula 3 ranges, but if you come down to stock, these uh, these stock Kilo ranges are very, very dismal. Even for stock, all the stock ranges have been you know pretty high, but the stock ranges for Kilo were pretty low. So RA came in and uh, they increased them pretty significantly. Uh, Luami, I think this is like the exact same as the Kula 3 detection ranges here. So... Uh, all very interesting stuff so and now for some quick conclusions so number one you are always going to be in active sonar detection range if you're trying to move in close to kill an enemy sub or frigate with torpedoes you're always going to be in counter in sonar detection range uh so don't even try and worry about that it's just something you have to, to live with so if someone's gonna light off a ping at you a good response is probably just a snapshot down that bearing and number two as play, when, you, when you're playing as a parry and probably as the Udaloi as well, never use the Omni Sonar. It accomplishes nothing. Uh, it's so weak, and it, all it's going to do is give away your position. Always use the Omni Rotational at a minimum, and definitely use the single beam. That ability to focus all that juice down a narrow, narrow range of the compass is a great thing to have at your disposal. Thank you guys so much for checking out this first of my experiment video series as a direct result of this experiment series some more experiments i want to check out is uh trying to come in here and make some sense of these ping numbers if you haven't checked out the lawami manual i would check it out even if you don't plan on playing lawami it has some very good write-ups about how the stock game behaves and what kind of things they changed about it so and then also another one that's more concrete and will probably happen sooner is active sonar counter detection range so now we know how f close you have to be to someone to, uh, you know, best case scenario, what your detection range is going to be for an enemy. So now I want to figure out what your best case counter detection range is. So if the, if you're playing as the Kula 3 trying to detect a 688i, when will that 688i be able to see you when you're sending out those pings? So that's the next one I'm going to check out there. And then after that, another one that I may check out is trying to deduce the behavior of pings in other environments. So like changing the bottom type, layer type, changing the sea state, time of year, uh, shallow water, deep water, all those kinds of stuff. So this is just scratching the surface. There's some other things I want to check out too, like developing cavitation functions. So like if at a certain depth, are you going to cavitate or not? And at what speed? Surface clutter experiments. So what? how deep do you have to go to get away from surface clutter? And some other stuff, like what at what speeds do certain submarines become basically silent from enemies and what ranges. So all kinds of stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to stay tuned for more in this experiment series. And as always, good hunting.